Uh, yeah. Um, what's up, everyone? It's uh, what, what day is it? See, that's day. see, that's what I'm saying. It's like I don't even like know what day. We were just talking about my old sponsor, Michaelis. I, I was just playing Billy some of his some of his Facebook stuff. So I was saying I was scrolling through Facebook and I, I just played Billy this thing that Michaelis was just talking about time and being in quarantine. And he's basically just talking about like AA stuff. And I was just saying, Oh, it was so refreshing to hear, to, to see a video like that on, on, on Facebook. It kind of just, cause, cause I've been kind of being a little hard on myself. Yeah. Like did I, and that's what kind of what you were saying before that, today I have. Yeah. It like reminded me of this because I think, in the beginning of the quarantine, when, when, when I saw that video, it kind of, maybe because I know him and it had an effect on me. Mm-hmm. And I think that I've been, every day I've been trying to practice this idea of like, dude, you, it's, it's okay if you didn't, like last night I tried to work out, just being easier on myself. I tried to work out and I was like, you know what? I just, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to do this. And I just like let myself not do it. But I have been eating better. I, I think I've been doing a lot of good things, but I have been trying to not beat myself up over the bad things. But the point I'm making is I, I called him and I've been FaceTiming him and he's been encouraging me to help others more, even more than I have been. Like some people have been reaching out to me and I'm, I, I've been with, I, I think I talked to you about this, like whether or not I should be FaceTiming randoms on, on Instagram that, that are reaching out to me. He was like, do it, take them through the book. And I'm like, okay. Sure. If you have the time, I guess, especially right now, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, yeah, I could be watching less kingdom or playing less video games or, um, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I it feels like I don't really do that actually even a whole lot. I feel, it just feels like there's always something to do, whether it's like clean the house or, you know, make the food or, or, break down the food like meaning like cleaning the dishes and it's just like there's always something to do yeah we're as busy as ever at my at my where i'm at i'm working about half half capacity Uh uh-huh but i'm overwhelmed right yeah because when you get home there's like stuff to do it's just crazy yeah it kind of reminds me of like what you know like think about how people lived like long 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 time ago you know, when there wasn't really like jobs, there was like, maybe they had crops or it's Mm -hmm. like all day. They were just doing like life things. Like, you know, my friend says that they didn't work as much. I think that's bullshit, but I'm talking more like either cave. I'm talking like, like Western or I don't know when, when you said tribal communities worked less, but my God for, I mean, could you, I mean, what do they do? There's no, you don't have like a local butcher or like a, a grocery store or, uh, there's no cars, so you don't have. I mean, there's no jobs. Mm. You, the people just you just hunt and gather. That's and, it. You just eat and fuck and <laughs> sleep and fuck and 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 and. I mean, you get your exercise cleaning your hut or building whatever the new thing they're building. I'm or, sure there's a lot of firewood. There's and, so much. And just, yeah, and that's what I'm realizing now is that like, oh my god, like we're just like. It's kind of nice when we have a minute. Like at the I, end of the day, I've been going to clients and like one of my clients over there in Bill Air, they're real, you know, they're well, well off and they have four kids. All their kids are there. No, three of their kids are there and one a friend of the family and they're just having a great time. Mm. They're just loving life being together because he, they work, he works so much, Yeah, you know? And so it, it's kind of neat to see. And, you know, they're pretty, what would I say? Like balanced family like yeah they, 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 our next door neighbors here too they're in the pool every day it's yeah it's crazy i feel kind of bad because summer just plays video games <laughs> but uh, I, i'm still i'm still working all day so huh yeah i'm probably killing people everywhere i go oh uh, just kidding <laughs> yeah but, i feel like it's kind of mellowed out like a little bit they say that right now is the peak uh, this next 10 days is the peak of it Really? Uh, huh. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, you know, be easy. Take it easy. I mean, I think this is a way. I think we should always be easy on ourselves, you know? Yeah, but I'm doing this challenge. Courtney told me about hers, and I'm like, fuck, I want to do a challenge, too. And I feel good about it. Yeah. Like, I'm going to get home tonight late, and I'm still going to go exercise, 
read wow. and write. Because I feel like you fuck. What's his name? Stay hard, motherfucker. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about? Uh, well, Joe Rogan. Uh, he, Joe Rogan has a shirt that says, Conquer Your Inner Bitch. Yeah. But, 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 but you're, are you talking about Walter Goggins? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stay hard, bitch, or whatever yeah. he says. <laughs> I, I, oh, like, that you just follow, keeps going through my head, huh? You follow him on Instagram? No. Yeah, he, he'll like ru- he'll be running and like he'll be on like mile ten and he'll be like doing a video like while he's running with his shirt off. Like, um, so Courtney is actually a trainer who I had like a years ago. Um, I, I mean, if it wasn't for Courtney, I, I wouldn't have ever met you or gone to prime time. R- well, yeah, or probably. Well, that's. Right, that's the point. We would have never met because of her. And I would have never met you because I would have never went to primetime. And then she heard your podcast and she called me for, I don't know, whatever wow, reason. And we've been talking. So, I've been really getting a lot out of it, actually. I love, see how that works? What a what a wild, that's so cool. Um, so she, a funny little story I like to you know, when I share, I talk about how I was, I had like way more time than her and she was happy and I wasn't. And she said, you know, well, you should check this, this meeting out. It's like amazing. And, and she, I just, you you don't have as much time as me. Shut up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like the truth was like, I, basically what I was thinking was just wait, it'll get worse. You know? And I, when I say that all the old timers always laugh because you know in early sobriety there's this thing called the pink cloud where it can seem like things are way good because they are because they're anything's better than what it was when you were getting loaded every fucking day but then that goes away because real life and reality sets in blah 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 but the point is is that she introduced me to prime time and and that's how i met billy and prime time is like uh Steps one, two, and three, and alcoholism, ego, and self, and it really, really focusing, really focuses on like um, mind how, power, disease thinking, and how powerless we are really over our mind, over our thought life. Complete defeat. Yeah, I love that one. Um, yeah, I forget that. I feel like I can like hear you like louder. Oh, oh really? Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, okay. So, can you hear something? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's. Oh. Um. Um. So yeah, I was thinking we could do like an experiment because, and I, we could title this one like, you know, like 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 step work. I, I'll just I could just read it and you could just chill. So I, I just recently, mm, I, I like to get my book too. Though. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I just recently did step eight, which is, um, like actually step nine is the amend step. Step eight is kind of like making the list. So step eight in, 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 in the book of Alcoholics Anonymous is, is make a, made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. And I think this is cool because like, whether you're an alcoholic or not, whether you're in recovery or not, I think it's cool to understand like what the steps are. Like the steps aren't like some weird, like culty thing. It's basically just a way for you to see your part in, in everything and, and, and to see the pattern of certain character defects that keep popping up. And, um, it's also a way to find a power and it's a way to help others. And it's just a way of life, you know? And I think that whether you need it, whether you need a 12 step program or not, I think that understanding what a 12 step program is could be cool because I'm sure there's someone in your life who could benefit from it. Um, it's definitely saved my life and a ton of other people that I know that I'm really close with. And it's just been a fucking miracle. Um, so Having said all that, I hope you don't change the station just because you're not an alcoholic. You know what I mean? Well, there's 200 12 step programs. ACA is one that helps a lot of people. You, right. you don't have to be an alcoholic or an addict. Adult you gotta, uh, yeah, you, you have to be a child of an alcoholic. Or just emotionally. It goes on to say, or emotionally fucked up, oh, or okay. whatever. Yeah, and and, and, and and yeah, that Al-Anon is a good one. That I think that yeah, there's just you know, for there's over, debtors over, anonymous. There's that's one of my therapists. Emotions anonymous, 
Crystal Meth Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous. You know what, though? This is going to probably sound naive and ignorant because I actually haven't really gone to any of those. I've I've only gone to Al-Anon. But I do, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that the foundation is all the same. A is way better, I think, because it's like fills watered down in those other programs. Okay, that's my. But, but it's still a watered down version of the same thing. Like mm-hmm. it's all the same. It's the same. Yeah. yeah, it's all the same. So, so there are a bunch of different twelve step programs. But yeah, I guess really what it comes down to is the twelve steps, and step eight is where you make a list of all the people that you have harmed, and you know all the steps leading up to step eight are like where where. Um, where people harmed you like you're, and now you have a resentment towards someone. So, so the whole process starts by, well, first finding a God, well, first admitting you're powerless and then trying to find a God that can restore you sanity and then giving your life over to that God. But then like the real work starts when you start uh, uh, making a list of like your resentments, which is really only a way for you to see your part. Because if I'm ever mad at somebody, it's really just because I, it has more to do with me than anything else. So I either am not accepting them or my pride's hurt, which is a character defect or I'm being selfish or whatever. So, um, and then once I realized that actually these people that I thought I resented, they're actually all the people that I harmed. So now I need to like actually make amends to the, these people who I thought it's like a way to flip it. I think there's probably going to be more people on your, a men's list, then I, I think that the list isn't the same. Obviously it's, there's different people, but I think there's going to be the same person on both lists. Like a lot of times, right? Yeah. Basically meaning yeah. like, you know, when you feel like you've been hurt, maybe it's a good to look at what your part was and how maybe you hurt that person really, or uh. what your character defects are, whatever. Um, so, the way we do our step work is I write where I'm noticing any kind of direction in the step. And the right. first direction in step A is make a list. Yeah. yeah. It's literally the first word. Right? And I like it. I'm kind of a, like a stickler. If you put it in the first person, mm. it just speaks to you. So yeah. Make a list of all persons I had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Mm hmm. Steps eight and nine are concerned with personal relations. First, we take a look backward and try to discover where we have been at fault. Next, we make a vigorous attempt to repair the damage we have done. And third, having thus cleaned away the debris of the past, we consider how, with our newfound knowledge of ourselves, we may develop the best possible relations with every human being we know. Like, that's pretty incredible. And then the second thing I wrote was take a look backward to see where we were at fault. But, like, what a great way to live. How can I have the best possible relationship with every human being I know? I feel like that kind of contradicts some of the work I do with my therapist because, you know, there's like a couple people right now who I think don't like me. I, I, I guess I'm, I guess I'm not going to name them, but, uh, I mean, cause we're still like, well, at this point, I mean, we're, we're still fixing that other podcast, but since she can't go to the studio, she was like, whatever. But, um, my, 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 the, my, like, like, I want to call these people and be like, yo, how can I make it right? Or, I listened sorry. to it before you took it off. It was oh. crazy, that podcast. Too bad no one can hear it. I think it's one <laughs> I mean, of the craziest I could, ones. I could make it live, like, easily. Make it live? What do you mean? I mean, mean? I could, oh, you I could, could just put it's, it it's, it's, pr- it's, dra- it. it's a draft right now. But it was, pretty, it was a pretty intense night where Billy was like... I got to tell you, though, man, I've been craving getting loaded mm-hmm. ever since... Really? Yeah, and I have these Valium that just tempt the fuck out of me. Yeah, that's day. scary, dude. I, 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 I would. Do you, do you not think that the Valium have something to do with that? I think it's a combination of the microdosing, the CBD incident, mm-hmm. the Valium, just being sober a long time, and the 
you know, the, the family breaking up, it's been tough. It's yeah. been rough well, and tough. And now the virus and the families and all this shit. It, it makes sense um, because of all those things. And I'm really sorry that I had to be kind of... It even started before that when they legalized marijuana and I fucking started growing it. Okay. So it's been coming. It's been a process. So now we're getting to the truth, right? Well, it just sounds like, oh, it's okay now. It's medicine and all that. You know, it's just getting really, like we talked about, the gray area is getting big. You know what, though? Like maybe that's just your alcoholic mind trying to convince yourself that like I now you're I like, feel like I can do it now sometimes right. for about two seconds. I'm like, maybe I could do it. Well, I, I, <laughs> I took some CBD before we started. I feel nothing by the way. But yeah. Like, I take it every day, but I thought like, Oh, maybe I'll drink. I, I, I just, I had that. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, you know what though? Like I feel that way about like energy drinks. Like, like it took a lot of self will for me to not, drink something caffeinated right now. Mm. That's like hard for me. I just, I do it with everything. Right. So it's like, but I yeah, quit nicotine. That was freaking hard, dude. Except for Evigan gave me some, uh, toothpicks with nicotine in them, but I haven't gone he back. Did. Yeah. Uh, Billy's been, uh, working for Jason and Vic at mm-hmm. their ranch. So cool. It's fun it's, over it's there. So cool. Will, will you, uh, just describe what it's like over there while I get my vape real quick? Oh man. It, it's like gardens and, uh, there's alpacas and they're building a chicken coop and there's garden vegetable garden and like it's really overgrown old school valley like 1950s valley it's like this one little area that's still preserved over there and they got this little old house there and uh victoria's real into uh oh uh, and the property next door yeah, I'm back and forth there. You ever seen the alpacas? For sure, yeah. There's um four alpacas now, and um, I don't know. It's just really pretty, and and it's not like cookie cutter. It's like kind of wild and wooly and artistic and fun it's like a uh, fun place to work and, and they're really cool i really like the both of them so that's because like that? so uh, they're like kind and loving most pretty basically i mean they're sort of on the same tip that we had to be trained to be over decades in in a 12-step program they kind of just doing it their own way well, they did. Yeah, Jesus. Jesus. But they're, but they're like, Angela told me that bef- that uh, I got to accept Jesus before I die, and she gave me the whole rundown of what I have to accept. Really? Dude, she's making note cards out of the Bible today. Whoa. She plays Bible trivia. She um, is all in. But 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 they they have a um a pretty cool understanding of Jesus and they're not Christians. Mm -mm. They just like Jesus and, and they follow what he said, which is cool. It's the sermon on the Mount, which is why we vibe so hard because they're like about these certain principles, love, humility, service. I mean, look, if you're humble, you're not going to step over the, the guy in front of you to get ahead. That's just, you can't be humble, honest and, loving and do that so it's 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 a certain way of life well it's just so it's like a dichotomy it's so backwards because we think it's competition you step on the other guy's head to get to the top and all this but yeah everything i'm reading all the spiritual stuff it's the opposite Mm -hmm. it's like you've got to earn it in your own consciousness and then it'll be given to you and you can't cheat you can't but but I think the key to that is that it's not only monetary, like success. No, not only monetary. That, so that's the thing is when you do these things, you get it even better than you thought you could have had it because like just winning isn't 
going to make you happy. I mean, let's just be real. Like what, what do we all want? We all want to be happy and at peace and, and we want to be joyous and free and feel like a cock accomplished and all these things you can have without, I mean, money is cool. It's a part of it, but like, because my point is, is that if you step over the guys, you're going to get the money, but you're not going to be happy because you're, it, it's like, you're going to have the guilt and it just doesn't work out that way. You well, know what I was reading is no, mm-hmm. like nobody's good or bad. Everybody's both. So somebody who's maybe rich and, and, and got that way, it's because they're following principle, but that doesn't mean they're following principle in every area of their life. You know what I mean? Right. So, so, so they, they have they, like a lot of money, but they're like fucked up in some other shit. Other may, ways may, maybe, something. maybe. I'm sure there's some cool millionaires. Oh, yeah, for sure. Bill Gates seems like a rad guy. Oh, no, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, <coughs> most of my clients are pretty cool. Mm-hmm. As far as I know, except for a few of them that they went bye bye anyway. So, so th- th- there's some really good stuff in here that I, I, it would be cool if we could get to. I'm not even gonna. Or uh, the second chapter says this is this is a very large order. It is a task which we may perform with increasing skill, but never really finish. Which is kind of cool because, like, you know, I have 15 years, Billy. You got 20 something. T- yeah. I mean, you got over 20 years and like, we're reading this book right now. This guy has over 20 years and like, he came over cause like we need to read, we need to do this. I forget sometimes this is it. This is the solution. This is it. It doesn't get any. That's why I've been like wanting more. to do it because I, 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 I've been putting it out there on the internet on this new app called TikTok. and low key, everyone that's listening, I'm kind of like, becoming TikTok famous and I'm not going to be, I'm not going to have an ego about it, but like, I'm also really proud of myself because like I've been trying to, you know, I think about a year ago, mm, I I think it happened slowly, but like there was a certain point in time where like my mind shift, my mind shifted because like in, 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 in prime time, they really stress certain things like, like all or nothing. Like, complete defeat like our primary purpose is to help someone else help another alcoholic so i started to think in extremes right like you can't really half-ass this shit so i started thinking wow like if that is my primary purpose then i need to be talking about this more to people instead of like trying to be funny or post a cool picture i should just talk about these principles um you know, through, through any outlet possible. And, and, and where I have the most reach obviously is going to be on these social media platforms. So for a year now, I've been trying to do this, you know, and, and now finally, all of a sudden on this new app, which is called TikTok, which girls are dancing. It's mostly young kids. It's a new thing. It's so weird that it's working there. And like not on Facebook and Instagram. How young? Like under 20 or? Dude, like, yeah, like Jamie and Ireland are 12 and that's like, they're obsessed. I mean, look, all ages there's, but I'm not, that's what people thought. It started as a dance thing Mm -hmm. with little kids, but Mm -hmm. I was watching a Gary V video today and he said, all platforms start as something. Facebook started as like college kids trying to like hook up. Instagram started as like photographers. Like it was basically high level photographers posting like sunsets and putting filters on them. Right now, Facebook and Instagram, they they all basically, his point was that they all become everything. Did you say hi? They all, all these apps become everything eventually. And this one already has, I mean, there's people teaching you about the algorithms and there's, people talking about Corona and there's just, there's tricks on how to live your life and all kinds of videos on TikTok. It's pretty amazing. Um, but I forgot why I started talking about this because, uh, you want to, your primary purpose. Yeah. But something made me want to think about that. Um, that you should be doing it through social media. Yeah, but I, 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 oh, oh, um, we never really finish. Ah, I can't remember. Whatever. I'm just really grateful. And I'm, there's, I have, we have new listeners. 
because of TikTok, because I, I mean, like, I don't know if you know the numbers, but in the past three weeks since the quarantine started, uh, Veronica's gained. Where are you at? I just hit 13. She just hit 13,000. And I'm on what? TikTok. Oh. 13,000 followers. And then I'm at 46,000. And the messages we're getting and the people, one, one, one person was like, oh, I just, you know, found your YouTube and I found this, that, and, 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 and then she wrote, and then I found the gold in all caps, your podcast. Hmm. And it was like so cool because like out of 40,000 people, y- 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 you're only going to see a couple hundred, like, m- like really get into your shit. That's crazy that's how hard this is to do. You know what I mean? To, to mm-hmm. build a thing because like, you don't really want to be like popping on. I mean, look, some people are just trying to like get popular on, on, on TikTok, but I'm trying to like just talk to people. I'm just trying to bring people. You're you, trying to change the world, bro. Whatever. Just admit it. <laughs> I'm just trying I mean, to, we are. Yeah. But, but, I, but, but helping one person honestly is changing is, the world. It, that is our primary purpose. Yeah. And, well, it says, constant thought of others and how we may best serve their mm-hmm. needs like everything in aa is totally unselfish mm-hmm. and it it takes just days and decades and years to really sink in you know yeah like, and, and it, it feels so good like right when billy got here i was just talking about how like um there are certain moments where, where you where, where you'll be like really going there you know, or, or somebody mm-hmm. will be like, like, mm-hmm. you know, the, the complete surrender and just like, like we are okay. I mean, look, yeah. I don't know. I can't speak for you, but like right now, like I'm okay. Everything's okay. Yeah. Somehow. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. And like you were just saying, you're going to go home and like do these things. So you're obviously okay. I'm going to stay fucking hard, man. Motherfucker. <laughs> what do you mean? Stay hard, motherfucker. Oh, right. Yeah, that's really cool, man. That's inspiring. That 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 makes me kind of want to pull out. Well, the, pull out. The I yoga did it mat. like yesterday. I, I fell asleep early and I got up and I was laying there awake around midnight and I just could not not get up and do my shit. Whoa, that's amazing. And I I start to understand what they're saying when they say stay hard, motherfucker. Because you, or when they get off the plane, they go. The first thing they do is they go to the fucking gym. Joe Rogan and Whoa. it takes it takes fucking balls of steel to do that shit. Yeah, or or discipline or yeah. Well, discipline it first, and then it's a shift in perception. Yeah, yeah. You're thinking. You, you like, look. You're like, oh, I just got to go work out. Like, I'm not gonna go like. That's what I'm not going to sit in my room and watch fucking Netflix and slowly start feel like shit. Well, the benefit is, and Courtney said, this is the main benefit. Of course, you do things you wanted to do, like I want to write and all this shit, but you're accountable to yourself and it makes you feel good. That's my whole, that's my therapist, like whole thing. That's his whole thing. He's like, fuck. Cause I'm always wanting to like rope people into therapy and like change them. But it's, it's, it's got to come from me. Mm. I got to be the one. Right. Like if I'm cheating my dad, I'm cheating myself. Anybody, yeah. Anybody. But like it, my dad's a big one because like you know, he's never been the disciplinary figure that I would have needed to be a- accountable. Do, do you know what I mean? Like like I let myself wake up late. Like I don't have that discipline because he gave me a pass and enabled this certain behavior. And, 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 you know, like he didn't really ever say like, no, I mean, he kind of did, but it was, he actually never did. He just said, yeah, but you got to go jump through all these hoops before Mm -hmm. you can. So the point I'm saying is like, um, that's why it's good to have parents that teach you how to be disciplined. But the point is, is that, yeah, like, when you do those things, you, you, it's just a better way because like the other way is like, will, can lead to some serious, like suicidal depressive thoughts. Yeah. Meaning it spirals either way Very you go. Very slowly. Yeah. Like you, it uh, sneaks up and you build up in the same way you go down. Like it's just a little bit like what the, we're doing here. And the, the, this, but you the know? trick, I think the trick is what Michaelis was talking about because to be easy on yourself and to not beat yourself up. Like, let's say tonight for some reason you don't do these things 
and then you wake up tomorrow, if you're hard on yourself, you're going to be that much closer to just giving up completely. Whereas if you're like, oh, it's all good, keeping the love, keeping the inspiration, it's all good. Now you have that motivation to do it today because today is all that matters anyway. Right now is all that matters anyway. And now I'm going to be bummed out about how I ate yesterday. No. And that's what we're trying to help Oleg with. But so, sorry. Um, yeah, but th- this is why I thought it would be cool because this is how we, when we do step work, I feel like we're always going off on tangents. Yeah, but we anyway. probably would have read this paragraph three or four times and broke it down and stuff. Well, we should. I think it'll just bore the shit out of people. I don't like know, this. man. But I, I, I do want to get to this next page because there is some cool stuff. And we could literally, that's the cool thing about this program is you can literally talk about each paragraph for like an hour. Easy. If you really want to break it down. So yeah, this is a very large order. Well, just to recap, they're basically saying um, we have to make a list of people that we hurt. Well, yeah, yeah, and where we were at fault, we right. need to see where we were at fault. Right, and, and, and then in the second paragraph it says this is a very large order. It is a task which we may perform with increasing skill but never finish. Learning how to live, learning how to lose – is the greatest peace, partnership, and brotherhood with all men and women of whatever description is a moving and fascinating adventure. Every AA has found that he can make little headway in this new adventure of living until he first backtracks and really makes an accurate and unsparing survey of the human wreckage he has left in his wake. To a degree, he has already done this when taking moral inventory, which is like step four and five. But now the time has come when he ought to redouble his efforts to see how many people he has hurt and in what ways. This yeah. reopening of emotional wounds, some old, some perhaps forgotten, and some still painfully festering, will at first look like a purposeless and pointless piece of surgery. But if, willing, but if a willing start is made, then the great advantages of doing this will so quickly reveal themselves that the pain will be lessened as one obstacle after another melts away. And that's kind of like why I want to call these people and just be like, it's why I called Astrid. Like, cause Astrid was bummed out that that happened. And I just like, I had to call her. I had to like, just fucking suck up my pride and apologize. Fuck it. I think it's good that you did. Yeah, man. And now we're, I'm like able to just text with her and like, I mean, we're closer because of it. As long as she's still not holding on to some shit that she didn't tell me about. I don't think so. Um, so yeah, these obstacles are very real. The first and one of the most difficult has to do with forgiveness. The moment we ponder a twisted or broken relationship with another person, our emotions go on the defensive. To escape looking at the wrongs we have done to another, we resentfully focus on the wrongs he has done to us. This especially is true if he has in fact behaved b- badly at all. Triumphantly, we seize upon this, his misbehavior as the perfect excuse for minimizing or forgetting our own. And this was the, one of the paragraphs I wanted to get to because you know how like, when, when, like, I'll, I'll, like Veronica will say, to me, she, she just, it's just happened earlier. She said, Oh, you didn't clean this plate. You know what though? My thinking I'm so like Michaelis was saying, like he's been practicing this way of life for so long that he just like, I actually didn't say to her, well, yeah, but you do that all the time too. But that's just like the fucking thing that we do. When you're in a cup, when you're in a relationship with someone else or married, or you've been with someone for a couple of years, good luck trying to call them out on some shit and have them not like immediately point out your shit, which is what they're saying here, right? You got that. They're saying we automatically are trying to like minimize our shit by point. And it's like, no, that's not like when she said that shit to me. I actually said, I actually went in there and I'm like, but don't I normally do a pretty good job? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, then why are you bringing up this? I just was like, yeah, I didn't clean it good because I was trying to set up the podcast. I should have, but I should have just been like, 
Yeah, you're right. Uh, I'm sorry. I was just trying to set up the podcast. I'll, I'll try to do better next time. Or just listen to what the fuck she was saying. I was all defensive so quick that I wasn't even hearing what she, she was basically trying to say. Like, you did this, so don't get mad at me when I do it. Which is really just the same shit they're talking about here anyway. Because she's now trying to point out some shit I did for like, as almost like ammunition for like a future pull up that I might hit her with. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just weird. The point is, is that if we all just own our fucking shit. Well, what I get out of that is regardless of what anybody else does, this is about me. Mm -hmm. So... I didn't clean my fucking plate. Now, now we're now we just opened it up because like, we could talk about that for for the rest of the podcast, right? Because that is so crazy. Because this fool, they just said even if the person was acting wrong, yeah. It, some it's, people you act pretty fucking bad in your life. I mean, bro, all I did was like show how this shit was making us feel. That's all I really did. I just showed it to the world. And, you know, uh, one person in particular is really upset because, like, I think that there might be some questionable, you know, the bottle that I was given is, 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 is it, its integrity is, is it should be in question. It, it, is, it is in question because it made us feel like other CBD doesn't make you feel there's that. So, but I don't, but that's not my concern. My concern should only be dude. Like I should have been like more like scared that day when I asked you, I should have been more forward about like how crazy this shit was making me feel. And I, I, Basically, the point is, is that when you do that and you only look at your part and you like really look at it and you apologize and you own it, it just always makes the situation like better. And like it takes that. And I think you have to kind of do it with a certain level of humility, you know, because if you're doing it like on some like, but I was really right shit, like you're not really going to feel that. And nine times out of 10, the person just. Tell, tells you what you want to hear, which is like, yeah, I'm sorry for my part too, if they were acting wrongly. And then also I think sometimes there's a decision to be made. Maybe I don't want this person in my life. And maybe part of what I did that was wrong was expect them to be something I know they're not. Does that make sense? Like some people are just like, like Troy, like, Troy says shit all the time that it's like wrong and fucked up, but I'm like, you know what? That's Troy. I can't get mad at him for for shit for 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 the way I know he is. You know what I mean? And like Tim too. Like I just have to have a boundary with Tim. Like I don't like talking to you when you're blacked out. I just I I I would prefer not to. I'm not even mad at you. I'm just letting you know that. I let him know that the other day because on this quarantine, people are getting like turned up. A lot of people are like you're even wanting to, but like people are getting like lit you know what i mean they're drinking more they're bored like have you been reading about that online there's like memes and like videos and like like day one like whatever like i got a whole box of wine like day two like second wine bottle i don't know it's like there's a lot of memes like making fun of like you know a lot of people's behavior i mean could you imagine like the people that have nothing to do that like kind of have a drinking problem yeah oh i could uh you know, when that earthquake happened, main concern was, oh, shit, how are we going to get our dope? Like, that's phones all. were that's out. It. There wasn't cell phones back then. Right. Well, that's different. That's like a, you were like, we were like hope to die drug addicts. <coughs> I'm talking about just like regular, like, regular know, people, borderline alcoholic yeah. housewives and shit, you know? Housewives. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's it's actually, I, I, I'm like so scatterbrained. I don't know if it's this. I think it must be because I can't even, I'll forget like uh, work. I'll forget things at work. Like hmm. I'll forget, I'm so scattered. I can't get organized. I got this anxiety because I do go into homes and I'm like, well, fuck, you know, they don't want me in here. I pro- you know, oh, Am yeah. I going to kill somebody? One of my clients. No, well, that's good though. You should be thinking about that shit, you know? 
Yeah. Like Oleg is like taking this shit really seriously because he's like weak. But you're so you're so you're scatterbrained. I mean he's weak, like he, he thinks he has a bad immune system, so right. he's like all worried about it. Right. But like when I live that way, it just makes my life so much easier. I just like like there's nothing worse for an alcoholic than justified anger. Which goes back to the thing about the, that what they were saying about like maybe the guy did act wrongly. Now I have a re- right to be mad. Now I have a reason to be angry because these motherfuckers. And it's like, no, dude. Either like don't let them in your life. Yeah. Or well, we can't do that because we go overboard. Like, you know, well, well, I like mean, Astrid says she's got a can of gas matches in a baseball bat, you know, like that's, yeah, I, that's I got, a little I got overreaction. The, I got a little bit of that bat. Yeah. We get to see that she fucking, she, she made me feel terrible. Oh yeah. But have you guys spoke? Yeah. No, I, oh. for, I forgave her immediately. Like I didn't even get mad. Wow. And here I am like thinking that you were like mad at me. You kind of were though. I huh? was more mad at you. Yeah. Whoa. Cause I had, I did not know it. Like you, maybe you communicated it, but I didn't realize I was going to get loaded out of my mind mm-hmm. after 20 years of sobriety. I mean, I was just fucking yeah, like worse than mushrooms. Oh, you mean the microdosing? Yeah. Way worse. What? Way like more. Yeah. Damn. So people are probably like, is this guy sober? Yeah. Y- Whatever you want to think. Well, it was CBD that we thought had no THC. Yeah, but in I keep it. talking about microdosing, you know, and all this other shit. Uh, and they're well, like, microdosing is, is it's a it's a medicinal. I mean, yeah. Well, because you have a serious, I have a serious chronic illness, and I'll try just about anything that can that might help it. I mean, it incapacitates you. Like he can't do shit sometimes when it's bad yeah and, and it's it hurts. never gone completely so it's like it's just a quality of life thing and one day i might find the right solution could but, be just but the yeah. point is is that living this way where it's all i ever have to think about is my part because i have so much humility and i'm just so useless like my, I'm meaning like that might sound weird, but like complete defeat is like, I'm just, I'm done, dude. Like, I'm just done. Like, where do I need to be right now? I don't know. What do I need to do tomorrow? All right, cool. That's it. That's as far as I can. And I have to do it with God, like every single step of the way or else I'm just going to start fucking it up. So all I ever need to think about is me, my part. And it just makes everything so much easier when I'm doing that. Because I can get mad at anyone for anything. Fuck yeah, even driving or whatever. And dude, every single person in my life, I have like a thing where I'm like, oh, that's that person's thing. Or yeah, that's yeah, that. everybody has you know, like, shit. Like right? you, you got like, you probably, you know, I don't know if you're down to, to, to get to get really honest right now. Oh, so you're going to tell me what irritates no, you about me? I want, you, I want I, us to tell, to try to tell each other what we think our things are. I, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm into this type of shit. Like, I think that this, if you can communicate with like real friends, like with open and with humility and honesty and like, you can hear it and like actually look at it and try to work on it. I think that could be incredible. And it all kind of, coincides with the whole concept of learning to lose because like you know if you were to tell me what you think my thing is which i don't probably won't be surprised and um like i'm gonna hear it and i probably already know what it is i probably i'll I'll probably be like yeah you're right i know i have that like because we're kind of like a little bit more we look inwardly a lot so i think we already know what our shit's what our shit is but i just think it might be cool to like talk about it Okay, but I I can't really think. uh, Like, nothing just is flashing in my head. Like, your thing? Yeah, like... The thing that irritates me about you? Yes. Because I feel like we all have it. Like, I even have one with Jason, believe it or not. Yeah, but you know him way better than Yeah, I know him really, really well. The only reason I said that is because Jason Evigan is, like, the greatest... Like he's the closest thing to someone who I honestly feel like, you know, people say like, what would Jesus do? Like, I swear to God, sometimes my dad says this too. My dad will just be like, what would Jason do? Hmm. 
Right. It's like, it's close. I, he, Jesus, he, Jason. Like, you don't understand. Like, he's been in some situations. Like, I was getting loaded on the tour bus. And, like, bro, if you think I'm, like, intense now, like, it was just, you know, and I, he, I, he never made me feel unloved. Ever. So he's a great guy, but but why was he born with the Jesus stuff? Was he like no 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 not at all? We were corn fucking Metallica Led Zepp. I mean, we were like corn was like his favorite group, and that guy's like they're borderline like you know. Well, actually, the bass player found Jesus, and now Victoria's like obsessed with him. But my point is, is that he like you know he he doesn't clean. Like on the houseboat, like I was seeing like a certain side of him that was like, mm. he just like, he let, he wants everyone else to like, and they, I don't know how to say he doesn't want, he's just kind of like, he's so you in the moment. Hear that Jason? Yeah, that's how, I mean, because <laughs> no, I love him to death, but like, I, I think that like, you know, he's, that's like my, a part of one of my things with, with him. He's just so like chill that I think sometimes, um, but yeah, I'm sure that I'm like a little reckless or, but I just think you could be closer to people if, if you were comfortable talking about that kind of stuff. But I mean, maybe it's something I want to work on. Well, I, I really don't, I can't think of anything right now, but I can tell you what other people have said about you, but that doesn't really work. Right. Cause who cares what they said? Right? Yeah. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I only care about like what you think because other people, I think they're, 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 they're creating their own. Well, that's cool to know that. But and you, you know, what's funny is I feel like the things that I was thinking about you, it was, it had more to do with my fears. Like you probably were never at the point where I thought you were, which was like, I thought you were like pretty much like thinking like, maybe I should just not have this person in my life at all. Well, after talking to Astrid, I thought that for a while, but not mm. previous. So she had an influence on me. So like that being influenced, I instantly forgave uh -huh. You know, I was pissed off the night it was going on really? and I was thinking obscenities and I didn't say them on the podcast, Whoa. but I, I mean, I got the message across, but I just, like you said, what would Jesus do? That's what I, it sounds right. arrogant, but what would Jesus do? Well, no, I mean, I, I but that's the thing about Jesus. He wasn't arrogant. Right, it's if, not arrogant. If I'm you not really trying like to be arrogant, but, 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 but what would Jesus do? I can't even believe I'm saying that because fucking this Jesus thing is just, it's hit us like a bomb. It's like a nuclear Jesus bomb. Like, you know what though? It's kind of cool because I feel like even in the long, like I feel like in the long run, if you really follow the black and white print. Oh yeah, I know it's, it's, it's good stuff, but yeah. I think she might be taking it to other places based on certain things she's seen on oh, YouTube. Angela? Or, yeah. I don't know. She has her group. That well, that's the bomb you're talking about. Well, no, it's like that, and it's the Evigans, and it's the oh, podcast. Right. And, like, it's so important to Angela, who's a very important person in my life, but I just still wish I could get on board. Like, I think... Right. I like, yes, I follow Jesus. I follow his principles. Yeah. I think he's cool and it's everything. A it's a different level though. But Vic, Vic is on that. Is, it's like very that literal too. for her. Right. But even like Jason and Vic are very much on the like, like I sometimes I'll like to use the power, the word, the power. Yeah. Mix I, it up I, a little bit. Yeah. Jesus makes people but, scared. Right. So, but I also don't have a problem with Jesus, but just the fact that I'm able to mix it up is, is like, that's the difference between like us and like those, you know, like they're, it's only, they're only going to ever use that word Jesus because that's how all in the, and I just feel like the reflection of like my behavior and like my, how I act, that's, what's important. It's not what I'm choosing, how I'm choosing to get there, whether it's Buddha or, 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 or whatever. Yeah, but they don't believe that. But that's what I'm saying is like, for me, the, the, the most important thing is how we act and how we think, yeah. not how we got there. I mean, it would be so advantageous for me to go all in and believe that shit. Well, because... I, I think it's a good way to get there. As long as you're not. 
I, I, I don't really. It, how is that even possible? There's only one guy, and he's the son of God, and through him. And anyway, let's go somewhere else. Well, let's no, talk I about just think, I just think that that's like a, a metaphor. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but um, yeah, I guess that, I guess that's good. I guess we don't really have things that we. And, and when I really get honest about it, like, I, and I'm in that loving place, and I'm connected, I really don't have. I'm not. I'm really not going to pick people apart. Okay, well, I know now what your thing is. Okay, because you you're got, not going to like this at all. Please tell me. Because I want to. Uh, I'm just going to say it yeah. candidly, and you just. Why do you want me to do this? Because I think it'll be great. I because I, I want to know. I want to work on it. I want to look at it. You know. You think you live like a spoiled brat? You're absolutely right. And and that's what I was talking about with my therapist. Well, but but like but like you mean like with all the monetary and gadgets and and things and like you know yes. that if shit goes bad, you're gonna have a roof over your head. It may not be here, but you're yeah. taken care of. So, but 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 so basically, what you're saying is there's things that I and don't. The way you eat, like you can spend hundreds of dollars yeah. on food and not even think about it. You buy five drinks at Starbucks mm-hmm. instead of one. Mm-hmm. That kind of go out to eat. eat two bites and like I'm done or you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and you want to know what's funny about that hmm. on Monday? I face, I FaceTime with my therapist every Monday mm-hmm. and, um, he told me I should go to debtors anonymous because, um, my, the way my disease, one of the ways my disease shows up for me is like, compulsive buying or, 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 or like spending or, you know, like, like the girl who shared about buying a car, like we, we don't feel good. So we, we eat or we go to Starbucks and order like three drinks to make us feel better. It's just, it's alcoholism. That's how my alcoholism I, shows up. I would up. totally do that if I could. I do that at my own level. I yeah. Just no, but money. like, but, but we were, it, it, it consumed so much of the session because right now I'm in debt and Ridge, we're in a tight spot right now. It's really, yeah. and, and it sounds cause you just borrowed money to get out of it yeah. and then this shit. So yeah. I'm like freaking out, you know? Um, but I like got this neon sign, but like, see, so I am like personally, like, I'm like, obviously, like you said, like, I'm going to be okay, but Ridge like has to tighten shit up. Or else, like they, we may not be okay. So, just the point is, is that I shouldn't be spending money on anything because I am rich. And if I want to be able to, like, either bail us out or keep us going, like, I'm gonna want to have as much money as possible saved. So, I shouldn't be buying a sign that sa- that says this is the best part, a neon sign to go right there. Hmm. I but, can see how you're bored right now, though. And, and no, no, I just got like all sh- jacked up on caffeine, and I was in a good mood. I just watched, and I just—it's like what we do. It, whether things, if things are going really good, like we take another pill. If things are going really bad, we take another pill. So I just, I, 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 I pushed my thumbs on the thing, and and, and it, it, it gave me that, and and it, it also goes back to this whole concept of like I was just raised by parents who enabled me. So at a young age, I, I didn't learn these, you know, the limits. Like that's my problem is I don't accept my limits or any limits. Like I want to drink more coffee than I should, you know, I I don't want to be limited, but I have to like stop. I mean, that's a, that's a big one because my, my health, my stomach is forcing me to look at that one. Yeah. And you know, if I'm going to be honest, I was a little brat as well. And it's probably the reason that, it, you know, we're mirrors for each other. Right. So I, I probably think that way. I just can't do it. So I'm like, fuck that shit. But see, for me, like the truth is that I'm and doing as much as I can. Yes, you're right. I, I need to work on that. 
I need to work on like, I didn't say you need to work on no, it. But I said I, no, that's but, the one thing that like gets to me. And if I was okay with it, I would be like, all right, cool. We're still friends. But like, I'm actually not okay with it because it's contributing to me being like an infant and not growing emotionally because you have to be able to be like, no, I'm not going to get that thing because I want to be more independent. And it's like you said, you're in charge of your, like you're going to go home and do those fucking things because you're the boss and you know, that's what you should do. And if I say no and I save and I, and I'm more responsible financially, it's like something I don't want to do, but if I do it, I'll feel better about myself. Therefore, you know, helping me become a more it's discipline again. Yeah. Fucking discipline. If we could sell discipline, we'd be. But but the, but 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 the whole point that I'm trying to make now is like what Mika- to go back to what Michaelis was saying. Like I'm doing so much. Like I don't need to be doing this. I've never got paid doing this. This isn't something like we could just be chilling. But I know this is something productive, and this is something that can help other people. And I've done fifty. Yeah, I know. I, I hear you. No, but hold up. I've done. F- this is the fiftieth episode or actually 54 because there's four other ones that are drafts right now that's like over a hundred hours um yeah i mean not to just you, you know uh, but i'm also you just put a, of, a tremendous amount of effort into things and yeah. you have which which some is some cash available for the stuff you need to make these things happen which is a quality that like a lot of people in my position don't have so i'm grateful for my dad to for teaching me that too bad he didn't teach me, you know, how to, how to be deprived or how, how to, how to not have, or how to, but because he wanted, he loved me so much that he wanted to just give me everything he never had, but it's like not helping me when I want to work out. And it's so hard because I'm not used to having to do things I don't want to do. Just do this challenge with us. You make up your own challenge. Like- but you know what else is crazy? Sorry, sorry. I want to let you finish that, but I got really good grades. It's hard to believe. Bro, because I, I that's <laughs> not the that weird, I think you're dumb, but, but you that's just like don't the seem like a school guy. The thing is I like when I wanna like put my when I wanna do something, like I just go and I just do not give up. I got good grades too. Yeah? Well, once I went to juvenile hall, I went to school year round for a couple of years and caught up and was in a boy's home. Yeah. I think that we're both, I think a lot of alcoholics are, are very capable when they put their mind to something. But so you were saying I should do the challenge. So it's one, what is it? It's exercise. You make your own challenge up. So yeah. she just told me what hers was. She's way beyond anything I thought I could do. So I picked something I thought I could do. What, what, she, what she, what are hers? Uh, it's like an hour and a half of exercise every day. Read 10 pages out of a book. Um, yeah, drink a gallon of water. Yeah, she's getting uh, it. And here's the problem. If you fuck up on any one of them, you got to start over. And she's doing it for like 30 days. I picked 10 days because yeah. I thought maybe I could do 10. Yeah, I'm down. I'm actually already doing that. But I'm being more forgiving on myself when I don't work out. And I'm not, I don't have like numbers for each thing. So it gives me a little bit more leeway. So I think it would be good. I think a gallon of water for me is good. Working out every day for like, see, that's the thing is I don't. Here's why it's good. I may be tired as fucking like, uh, really, am I even going to retain three pages? Uh huh. I don't fucking care. I'm going to read those three motherfucking yeah. pages. Yeah. And, and it, it turns out that I do retain it. Yeah. Or, or you retain some of it or you just accomplish the thing. And no matter writing, what it is. You, like I would like to write. So I'm writing for five minutes. First, I just started out just gibberish as long as I'm writing. And then I wrote something pretty cool. And then I wrote gibberish again, but at least I'm writing. Because right. if you don't do it, it's never going to happen. Yeah. So five minutes doesn't seem like a lot, but for me, it's a hundred percent more than I was doing. So I think I'm going to be ripped by the time this is over because we're trying not to eat sugar because sugar might be triggering my Meniere's and then I keep forgetting and I've been binging on ice cream and uh, you know with the little one she's always got goodies in the house but yeah sugar I mean I almost believe I've never had the discipline but I almost believe if I could clean my diet up so much like she does she's insp- she's kind of an inspiration cuz she has food sensitivities 
and eating. Well, I don't know if she wants me to say this on here, but you know, she's got some issues with food and stuff and, uh, a lot of discipline. So I think if I could achieve maybe homeostasis, like at this really high level that I could be mostly free of the Meniere's maybe. Yeah, it's a big deal. You know, Joe Rogan was saying when he went on that meat 30-day carnivore diet, he had more energy than he's ever had. Joe? Yeah, and then when he went off it, all his bo- his body started to ache again and Whoa. his joints and But I also think that the same thing works if you like just eat green stuff. I think that like that's the weird thing is like basically like the point is is that what you eat I don't think there's anything more important as far as like how you feel and and your health. I don't think anything's more important than what you put in your body, which makes fucking sense. Such a tremendous challenge though, because mouth pleasure is, uh, you know, it's the first on the the top of the list. Yeah. It's, um, I've been doing really good. Veronica. I mean, dude, Veronica, Courtney was Veronica's trainer for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then she started training my dad. I mean, she, dude, Ask her about my dad. Her and my dad were like so close. Like it was crazy. Like she was, she would joke with him and they had a really, I mean, bro, like she cried when she had to leave us. Like we were so close. Like she is so amazing. Like I, I'm just so grateful. I hope she hears this because she's just ins- amazing. Like the, what she did for our family and, 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 I was an example for her. What she's, I'm kind of how she ended up. How long sober had she had when you met her or when she started no, training you? She wasn't. Oh, she wasn't sober she yet. She came to me outside and was like, I, how, what do I do? I need to like. So she was already because, your trainer? Because I was sober. Right. So she and was training so you. So I introduced her to, you know, sobriety and, and AA and there's a way. And, and I'm straight up unless, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that I'm how she ended up going and doing the deal getting sober. Yeah. I don't know. And then, it, and then the, the cool, funny, uh, ironic thing about it was she found prime time right away mm-hmm. and I was like all fucked up and she now was able to help me find this new thing that it's just crazy. But yeah, she's, yeah, she can't, like her and Veronica, like that's what, that's the thing that they, they, they bonded because they can't eat. Like some people just can't do it. Like once Veronica starts fucking up, it's a wrap. She just has a problem. And she also is very allergic to a lot of different things. It's weird. She has like very crazy, like, but when she just fucking eats like on point, like she just feels better mm-hmm. in so many different ways. And, and dude, I've been eating I don't know if I'm like on one, dude. I feel like I just have more energy than I normally do. Like I ate healthy. I've eaten. I don't know if you noticed, but do I look a little bit thinner? Yeah. Yeah. Bit, yeah. Because yeah. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. I've been going in and, and it's like, that's why for me, like when oh, you walk six miles today, well, that was a lot today. I've been trying to stay a little active. I'll bust out the yoga mat and I'll, I'm, I'm trying to do like 200 push ups a day, which I never, I barely, I, if I could just do a hundred, that'd be chill. hundred push ups a day, hundred sit ups a day and like side planks for like a minute every day. Yeah. Huh. See, I try to like skip muscle groups. Like I'll do chest <clears throat> yeah. and then I'll do something else. But I mean, I'm just here on the floor, just jumping jacks, jump rope, sit-ups, push-ups. And that's what I'm calling it. I'm not going to make it too complicated. Maybe I should. No, no, I, no, don't. Do, I mean, do I keep it simple. Leg squats, maybe. Yeah. Walk. Um, But what I was saying was that um, eating is the number one thing now. I, I've I've changed it. Like I, I know for sure now that eating is 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 at the top of my list of like things that I can do. Like I'm sick of eating bad and thinking, oh, I'm just gonna like work out extra hard. I don't like working out. And if I eat like shit, I'm probably gonna like give up and be like, oh, it's hopeless, and not work out as hard. But when I'm like eating really really good, like. I'm all right, even if I don't work out. And, and if I do work out, I'm like more motivated to do better, you know? 
So eating is, is, is the number one thing to, to second what you were saying. I do think that it will be the answer to your problems. And me and Veronica were, we're walking today and we were just talking about how like at my birthday, I ate like a cupcake and like a, 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 a s'mores and like some, of, some of this chocolate cake my mom made. That's like amazing. And like, literally I was depressed yesterday the whole day. I was just like off the whole day. I was off and, and we were walking halfway. I, I, I've been drinking these kale smoothies and shit in the morning. I know Joe does that. Like I'll just throw strawberries, blueberries, and I'll drink a kale and I'll put kale in it and like an orange and like maybe like some of an apple or something. You don't squeeze it. So you just mix it all up. Yeah. I just have this like bullet. It's like this little blender mm-hmm. thing and it just mm-hmm. fucking mixes it all up so that like I'm getting all the fiber still out of all that shit. Mm-hmm. And like, that's just what I've been doing. If I'm, if I'm hungry enough, I'll have some eggs, but And then I started walking and I got up like early, you know, I got up really early. Um, I mean, not like for me, I was, I was going to go back to bed because yesterday I was really depressed, but, um, it was because of what I ate on my birthday, which was two days ago. And then today just drinking the smoothie and going for the walk, I was like back in it. And I like ate, you know, we had tuna and I've been making these salads like spinach and like, uh, vegetables, like, you know, cucumber, like peppers and I have this nice little Greek salad dressing that I like. I gotta use the bathroom. Cool. But the, what I'm saying is I feel so much better. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah, go. I'm I'm gonna keep Okay. Oh, what were you gonna say? Dude, Americans eat like shit. Oh yeah, it's so crazy. It, it's like it's slow poison. Yeah. yeah. I, I it's everyone when they start getting older has to face this. You can't, you can't eat that. Way. Yeah, I could go. I'm going to go off that on that real quick because like, let's say you go to a fucking, Oh, do you want some bread? Okay. Well, bread's just there. Okay. First of all, bread is something we probably shouldn't even be eating to begin with, but they start you off with bread and then you order like your protein or whatever. But then there's two sides of like mostly more bread. Like, it should be the other way around. There should be like two proteins and then the vegetable and then like maybe a carb source. So yeah, restaurants are, I don't know why they can't just like give out like nuts or, um, I don't know. What if there was like, instead of bread, what if it was like a vegetable as like an appetizer or like a, um, you know, some kind of protein or, um, you know, a fruit even like, what if we had like, you know, what if it was like normal to give everyone like an apple? Oh my God. That's fucking genius. An apple. Everyone eats an apple before their food. Now they're going to eat less like bad shit, but instead, no, we, we, we stuff our fucking gourds with a fucking with bread. It's like the worst thing. Um, but yeah, I, I just can't stress it enough. Like I am, you hear people say it all the time. It makes perfect sense. You're putting it in your body three times a day. What could be more important? But I just, you know, I, I, I just, I think I just minimize that in my mind. But when you really do it like this past couple of weeks, I've been like really eating like like, well, I don't know if I told you, but I did a five day Dr. Scholl's cleanse. We took 50 pills a day. You take, wow. yeah, you take 10 pills on an empty stomach or you try to have it on an empty stomach. It's impossible. Five times a day, 10, 10. So basically every, so basically as soon as your like stomach is starting to like feel chill, because when you take 10 pills and you drink a bunch of water, you have to drink like a bunch of water with it. You feel full. So it's hard to eat and it's, it was hard and you can only eat vegetables and fruits. So for five days I took all these pills, which kind of make you like shit a lot. And then you have to take like two or three of these other pills at night before you go to bed, which like really gets your gut going. So like when you wake up, you're just like, it's like crazy. So five days I fucking did it and it just got me on this. Like, yo, I was like fucking on one. Like I had so much energy. And I wasn't even drinking coffee either, really, because Hmm. like I'm taking so much. I mean, I did on like the third day a little bit, but like I just had energy and it was like, okay, wow. I go hard on the coffee. It's so stupid. It's just so stupid. 
because we can just like you could literally probably drink like a cup of like kale juice and you'll probably feel like more maybe that's why i get so tired a hundred percent. Nothing but drink coffee till like two or three in the afternoon, bro. Your uh, dre- no your, your adrenal <laughs> glands are shot. Oh, uh, probably. That's what um, Sarah was telling me. I have this dope tea right now. It's this like pancake. Have you ever seen those like pancake teas? They're like really condensed. I have this tea. It's called Black Metal Shoe 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 Shoe. Is like a type of tea or something. This guy lives in like Russia and he's like this ill tea guy. Jason and Vic brought it back for me. It has like a picture of like a skeleton hand and the skeleton hand is like holding something. It's like a dope like graphic and it's like mm. black metal. And this guy has his own little like site where he sells like crazy dope teas. He's like mm. a, obsessed with tea and this tea has been like fucking, it's like amazing. Mm. It like gets me fucking, I guess there's like more caffeine in tea, but that when I drink too much of that, like I don't want to eat and I don't feel right either. But, um, but yeah, so yeah, eating is, is, is what's most important. Uh, I mean, just try just eating a bunch of fucking spinach and kale and, you know, cucumbers and apples and oranges and pears and bananas only for five days. I was just like, I can't, I get so hungry. And the thing is, I could eat just meat and vegetables, but it gets so expensive. Really expensive. So, so I throw rice in there so I fill up a little bit. Well, well, no. You just eat fucking kale, spinach, sa- a spinach salad with like, with like vegetables chopped up, like avocado, um, uh, peppers, cucumbers, and you fucking mix it up and you eat that thing like a big bowl. And you're full? Like, I mean, you might have some room for like some tuna or like some turkey, you know what I mean? But that's what I've been eating, you know? So it's just been, it's been like, and it also introduced me to like, you can just eat a salad with vegetables. Like I never like thought that would ever be like enough or I always, I'm always thinking like, oh, I got to eat like my protein or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like the truth is that that shit kind of like weighs you down Cause it's like harder to digest and it like, and it takes the energy from your body because it's, you know, so now I'm like, I'm just more comfortable like making a salad. With That's the, great. Yeah. It's amazing. It's so this whole quarantine thing has been, but then I started freaking about freaking out about our credit card debt. But, um, yeah, cause I, I only because people aren't paying. Right. So it's like we need to get them to pay so I can breathe a little bit. Right. I bill um, everybody a month behind too, so whoa. my billing's gonna go. You need to cut that shit out. Well, I bill for the previous month because I do a monthly service. Right. So just, oh, okay. You have to. But a month ago, everything was kind of cool, right? right? So I was doing work, and now they're gonna get these bills in the middle of this shit. You just wish everybody was like me. And you could just take it out. Like, why would oh, I have a few people on credit card and I just, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, what else? Anything else? Oh, that, that you were thinking I could tell you about the time I was kidnapped or we could do some more eight step. Wait, have you not told me that? Oh no. You haven't talked about that on here. Mm-mm. Yeah. I'd be, I mean, or that's... let's do eight step. Well, let's just, that's crazy. Why wouldn't you just tell me that? That's insanity. Unless you don't want to talk about it. I feel like you have, it was like, were you in the back of a trunk? Yeah, so I was a kid in the 70s and we spent a lot of time in Topanga Canyon. I mean, if you don't want to. No, I just, I'll do it. Yeah. It just seems kind of all over the place. It's fine. From eight steps to kidnapping to eating and... Yeah, but it's all, <laughs> here's the thing though, is it's all related because that, I think it's all related. It's just a way of life. And uh, I think that this experience that you've had probably shaped, helped shape who you are and coming to terms with that is a part of the step work that we do. Well, this is just one little thing among a lot of, a lot of but, things. But have you like... Was there an amends to be made or did you forgive? 
Did you, has this been on your step work? No, because it was uh, just really random. What do you mean random? Being kidnapped is not by a stranger. So it wasn't like someone I knew or anything. Oh, okay. Right. Did you ever get a look at him? Yeah. Yeah. He tried to tell me he was my grandfather, my stepdad, my uncle, Wait, but how so, okay, so I was in Topanga Canyon. This was in the 70s. Me and my mom used to hike all through there, and we, you know, we knew some hippies up in there, and we spent a lot of time there. We were at the center, at the market there, and she had one of those big station wagons with the fake wood on the sides, this big uh-huh. green station wagon. And I was a little kid. I don't know, maybe I was six, five or six, and I was sleeping in the back like I did all the time. And this guy stole her car because my mom was just, she was out there, dude. She might go into the store and come back an hour later. Like, mm. who knows what she was doing, wandering around and really doing little pirouettes and going down by the creek or flirting with guys. <laughs> wow. I don't know what the fuck she was doing. And, uh, dude, they used to tie me to a tree when I was like two. They tie me to a tree at Stony Point and go climb. And they'd come back hours later. Wow, and you were just, just like you, you, little like, baby, like you were a horse on a leash. Yeah, I'm, and they told, like like you had like rope to walk around. A little bit, yeah. Or right, 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 right. Back then, no one called the. Surf. But you couldn't like untie the knot. I was a baby. Oh whoa! Yeah, and uh, so this guy stole the, and then I got up, and we were racing through Topanga Canyon, where it's getting all windy wait, down by the beach. Wait, so you were sleeping in the back seat? Yeah. Okay, right. So he didn't even know. It was like a surprise. Oh, shit. And then I pop up, and I'm like, who are you? And and he just he even said he was like my grandma. I don't know. He just went through all the people that I could be, and I'm like, no, you're not. No, you're not. Whoa. And then... I think I saw a helicopter following us from above. Like we were really? flying through that windy canyon, and, me, and I'm like talking to him. Did your and, mom report it like right away, or did she? I, I think she must have came out and saw that I was gone. Like, do you know? No, no. Now I remember. So what happened is we got down to PCH, and there's a place called the Red Barn where they they sell horse food and chickens and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And he let me out right there in the road, and I walked to the side of the road, and a lady said well where's your mom and I was so little at that time all I knew to tell her is uh, this is how I got the nickname Pollywog Um, I said my mom's where the Pollywogs are because I used to collect Pollywogs in the creek behind the center of the store there wow Um, so epic and so then the sheriff came and got me and then we were the guy left He, he still had the car and he was on the run so I, he was like pointing to the helicopter and took me to the station to identify him. And Whoa, the cop? Yeah. Wow, so the helicopter was there for you. Yeah. Well, no, they were following him. He was racing down PCH well, at yeah, this point. Well, yeah, but it was because the, he had a child with him. Yeah. I don't know that they would have done that if it was just a car stealing, you know? I don't know. This was the 70s, too. It was different. Like, Topanga was a nude beach. You go down to Topanga, and everyone was naked. What? And there was this big bamboo, like, so now you drive down, you just see the ocean. Then you drive, and it was just a wall of bamboo. And there's, like, people in the bamboo. And Whoa. there was the snake pit over there on the side. Like, it was a trippy place, Topanga, back in the Whoa. day. Whoa. So you would, you, would, you would cruise Topanga, like, near the valley, like, where that, like, like, water fountain concrete water fountain places and then also take Topanga and you would also be over by Malibu or by Topanga Canyon because it hits the PCH also you know there's Topanga and Ventura Uh which you were cruising there and then there's Topanga and PCH you were also yeah all through Topanga Canyon yeah wow and then there's like those stores that are like halfway Mm -hmm. that's the center yeah yeah it's a cool place uh, yeah. So that's, that was, so that's not necessarily like an, that wasn't, it wasn't terrible. No, yeah, it wasn't an intentional, an intentional kidnapping. So yeah, I got one for you. The time I went to a women's, a battered women's shelter. You went there? Yeah. My mom took me and my brother there so that the, it would look like my, my dad was uh, abusing her. Oh, she did it just for that reason. There yep. was no abuse happening. Nope. Oh, that's fucked up. 
I mean, that's the kind of shit that was going on. Like it was the IRS was coming to my, my mom and my dad ran a business. Like, you know, my dad, like he was a money magnet. His, he came out here from New York. He was, I mean, dude, he is, I, I mean, I don't know. I dude, that guy never stops working. Have you ever seen well, him? I know that this yeah. fool's raking it in. I mean, you know, Carlos, my uncle, like he's lives check to check. He's his guys are, they want to get paid. And Carlos has to wait till he gets paid to pay them. And my dad's always talking about how that's crazy. My dad has zero overhead. He's like sick with it. He has no car payment. You've seen the car he drives around in. (laughs) He has no overhead because he works out of that house, out of the office, out of Mm -hmm. his wife's office. And this is how it's always been. He used to have an office, but he rented out two of the rooms. So he made money on the office. Mm. He's crazy. He's like, he won't even buy shoes, you know? So he's so ahead that like he's able to like help me and my brother. And I mean, my brother just basically does jobs and you know, if he does a job and they give him a check, he just puts it in his bank account. Like he doesn't buy material. He doesn't have to worry about paying the guy. He just, he just buy, he just puts the whole thing in his, his account. So, but that's not the point. The point is, is that my dad, um, my mom and my dad built this company. It went from one truck to like, I think he had 40 trucks, like 40 crews going to 40 different jobs. You see why I'm the way I am. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like, I think like I grew up around my dad, like doing all this, but then he had to claim bankruptcy because I think when you're operating on a level that big, one bad month could ruin you. That's the thing. Yeah. So I think he did. He made a couple bad moves, did some jobs that were, too big, never got paid. He had to claim bankruptcy. So the IR and then they got divorced. So my mom's trying to get his money. He's trying to hide it. The fucking IRS is coming to the house. Hide. We had to hide like, and then like my dad had to move out and my mom was like sleeping with some guy, like walked in on him. It was like fucked up. And then like my dad lives down the street. My dad rents a room down the street. This is Chesbro road. You know where Chesbro is? Mm -hmm, Sort of. So my dad's driving by the house he used to live in, his house, every day, just fucking like out of spite almost. And he sees a car parked in there, the guy that my mom's fucking. Mm. So like, it just like was painful. Yeah, it was, I, I can almost identify a little bit because I've been going through. Some yeah, shit. It, but I mean, as the kids, like, you know, he would pick us up and they would just fight like they would just fight. Maybe that's why I'm so comfortable with like fighting and, and drama and cause I just grew up with it. Like my parents would just fight so bad. So my mom would just always be trying to think of new ways to get more child support. So she took us to the battered women's shelter and it was like, it was gnarly. How old were you? Um, I don't know, eight, nine. And you just did whatever she told you to do. I guess that's pretty young. huh? Well, she convinced us. I don't know. We just went and then they were like, you know, we're going to set you up with a new life out here. I'm like, you fucking tripping, bitch. I'm about going back to chill with my dad. Like, but I I can't remember if my dad, he was still living out of the room, but then he got like an apartment and then he got this house. I mean, the fucking, he just, it's so weird looking back on it in retrospect because when he, when she divorced him, he was like, he had nothing. He lost everything. He had to change the name of his business. He, 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 he was paying. He, he lost everything. He was just, he had nothing again after building like a whole dynasty and he just fucking grinded it back up. And then he lost that again. His partner left and he had changed the name. It was Ridge electric. Funny, right? Ridge production. It first the Ridge electric, then Agora electric. Now it's Canal Valley electric. I think there was another one in between there, but yeah, just to, I mean, and in the midst of all this, I'm like, I got leg perthies and I had a bat body cast. Did you see that? Have you ever seen that? I didn't see it, but you've but, told me about it. Yeah. So I'm in a body cast and they're arguing about who's going to pay for what. And I'm like this, I'm like, I don't know. I think I was like 10 or 11 at that point. So the divorce just, it never ended. I mean, it lasted 30 years. My dad was hated. My mom, he didn't want me to talk to her. She was never stopped trying to get more money. She's still trying. Well, they finally settled it a couple of years ago. My dad gave her like 40 grand. And, and, and it happened so much later that it was like my brother was mad because it was like his money. Because mm. the fucking company's in his name now. Mm-hmm. So it's this like big, crazy orchestration. Like my whole life revolves around this divorce. Like my dad partnering with my brother so my mom wouldn't be able to get the money. I mean, it's all just my dad's like this wildly manipulative. 
he's not really he doesn't really know that he's doing manipulative manipulative shit but he's everything he's doing is you know so my brother was but yeah they finally settled it and my brother was like mad at my mom for a while and then my brother had like fifty thousand dollars stolen from his safe cash and he it was never his, recovered no, it was his ex-girlfriend, but like, there's rumors that like my mom was in cahoots oh, with dude. her because she was talking to my mom. I don't really know what that's all about, but like, um, it's just kind of funny. Like, I'm like, how could they steal money out of a safe? Because she was his girlfriend. She had the code. He would he was he would get drunk and like flash his fucking cash. Oh, okay. He had fifty grand in cash, and one day he woke up crying. He called me crying. He said it's gone. And they came. Well, I well, remember she, that she you went up. after. You were kind of crazy. You guys were like ready with guns. Oh, like guns oh wait, and- yo, yo. We went over to Prosser's house, who's actually in Liberty House right now. Prosser's at Liberty oh, okay, House yeah. in Kentucky. He's been there for almost 90 days. I went over to this fool's house because I'm like, yo, like, because my brother told me, like, there's only like this many people that could have known. And this girl, Lindsay, who he was dating at the time, like, she was always like a nerd. Like, growing up in high school, like, I grew up with her. I never thought she, but. Upon further investigation, she was like a klepto and like Aaron Levant told me like, yo, this chick is not to be trusted. So like he kind of eventually figured it out. But before we had it figured it out, like we went over to Prosser's house and I told this fool, I said, yo, I know you did it. Like we got fingerprints, dog. Like I know it was you. And I hit him like the way I hit Troy when I first had the talk with Troy about like getting sober. I was like. Yeah, I know you got high yesterday. And he was just like, what? And this also happened when I was in high school. My best friend stole like an ounce of weed from me. And I just like, I don't know how I knew it was him. I thought it was him. But when I confronted him, I was like, I know you fucking did it. I got you on camera doing it. And he admitted it to me. And then I fucking punched him in the face. So it worked. It had worked for me in the past, but Derek didn't steal the money. Hmm. So I go over there and like, I'm like, yo dog, we know you did it. We got the fingerprints. And he's like, dude, I would never do. Have you ever met Derek? The guy in Kentucky? Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. like, bro, I would never. Like, I don't know if you notice how my brother and him talk, but they like emphasize certain words and they're like, I don't know. And he met him and my brother were like crying. My brother had to like step outside. He was crying. And it was just like, it just got like weird and um, he didn't do it. But yeah, there's been a lot of crazy shit that's happened in my life too. It's like fucking weird. It's, it's funny to think about it because like you think like, oh, look at this suburban neighborhood, you know, because Tackleberry is right down the street. And that's the house that my dad bought when, when I was in high school and gutted the whole fucking thing. And it was a concrete kitchen and there was no, I mean, it was the whole house was concrete and wood upstairs. And I bought like a fucking you know those like hundred dollar golf tee like green the cheapest carpet you can get the green carpet that you put Mm -hmm. like under carpet that was like my carpet for my room and i had a mattress on the fucking i mean it was it's just like it's just a trip to think like yeah like on one hand like yeah to just to kind of second what you were saying earlier about being spoiled like yeah like in a way but damn dog if you could have seen some of the shit that we went through like yeah on one hand we're in a ha- me and my brother in a house this big but on the other hand there's no kitchen there's just pipes sticking out of the middle of the fucking uh, the middle of the ground you know well, well yeah but i mean i'm not talking about your past i'm talking about present no i know i know but like just to just to kind of go back to the past like, we had a fucking open tab at Winner's Pizza. That would be nice, right? No, that was amazing. I'm saying it was like this so weird... You don't starve to death. It was this like weird, like, you're spoiled, but like, you're also like super deprived of yeah. like, you don't have the... You're, my dad never came Guidance home. Guidance and it nurturing was, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all so that stuff. It's actually... A, and... It's a fucking miracle that... Um, it's a fucking miracle I'm even alive. Yeah, me too. For sure. For sure. Yeah, and you can't really... I've drowned, crashed, beaten, guns, all that shit, like, yeah. before I was 12. And I'm not even, like, a rough dude. I'm not, like, a prison dude or something. I'm just, like, a guy, like, a, you know, just a... I was just a kid. Fucking kid. Yeah, but that's the thing is we, 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 we all come from different 
I guess we're all little kids at one point. We all come from different like scenarios, but each one, actually, I think me and you kind of are, have definitely lived a more eventful, interesting life than a lot of the people probably listening. I mean, I'm sure some people have gone through some crazy shit, but yeah, I've been at knife point and all. Dude, you got to start listening to it's all bad. Uh, Every episode is, is so entertaining. I tried. Oh, you didn't like it? No, no, no. I didn't try hard enough. I, I, I just, I was doing something else or, Hmm. I mean, but it, I had it like I pulled it up and I like went to go listen to it because I feel like someone else may have even told me about it. But so, yeah, ch- ch- check this out. This is kind of funny. Dad, um, can I just ask you what you think would have happened if I never got sober? Oh. I think you'd be dead. I can't answer that. What? You'd be dead. You'd be fucking dead. Right. Does anybody say you wouldn't be dead? What? Does anybody say you wouldn't be dead? Did you know that I was using drugs as the way I was? No. No, and I didn't even know the half of it. What did you think was happening? Why did you think I had dreadlocks and was out of it most of the time? I didn't know that anybody could do that much drugs. Right. To me, hmm. smoke a joint and you get crazy. I didn't know you had to do all that stuff. So you're happy that I'm... Get. Are you happy that I'm not dead? Yeah. <laughs> and that's it? That's it. Well, the best years to come. No, that she is the unluckiest kid. man in the world. Is Kelly still sober, or is she made? Yeah, it? really. She talks to Hillary all the time. But yeah, that's kind of that's kind of cool, huh? Like, I just say like that's like that's like one 20 of twenty Norcos a day, dude. One of those would fuck me up right oh, now. Oh, you read it too. Yeah, yeah. So that's this is the kind of stuff I've been posting on TikTok. That's been cr- that has eleven thousand views. 1,355 likes and like bro just just trip out for a second um look at all these comments like oh wow you look just like him i don't believe you you look alike so happy for your sobriety dad loves you so much i'm the luckiest man in the world says it all i used to spend 2,500 a week i feel you my dad died before i quit your dad's Mm. awesome your dad's awesome. You can tell it's a painful thing for him to talk about. You saved yourself and you saved your dad from heartache. He said the sweetest thing. My son is an addict and he has no support from his father. It would be good to see. Best video yet, Pat. 15 years later and you still have to bring it up every chance you get. Sober people are the worst. <laughs> mm. But it's mostly good. Like, question? I've been addicted for 20 years. I have no idea how to start this sober thing. I'm scared to have kids. I look normal. Ah, Like, I'm going to respond to her. Like, wow. Like, it's like real people saying real shit. Like, hmm. crazy, right? What did she say exactly? She was afraid to have kids? She said, did question, she... I've been addicted for 20 years. I have no idea how to start this sober thing. I'm scared. I have kids. I look normal. Uh. I look normal. So she, like, maintains? She's so like w- a... what am I going to say to her? <sighs> I, I, it, there's only one thing I can say. It gets... A, no, AA saved my life. Yeah. You gotta go to AA. How am I gonna not talk about AA or when you could someone say twelve step? Maybe she. I gotta send her drink. the prime. I'm sending her the website. Oh yeah, prime time for That's, sure. I've literally sent that website to. I'm not exaggerating. Yeah, prime time specifically. Probably I right? have it on copy and paste at this point because a lot of AA is not. You know, I'm literally gonna say, please check out this. Site. No, it's amazing because especially now it's really come in handy because it's a place, it's one place you can go to get to meetings, to hear speakers and to read. All the website, you got everything. It's, got, it's everything's everything. there. And literature and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So please check out this site and I'm just going to send her the site. Primetime is now.com. Primetime is now.com. It's got it all. It has, it has, uh, even pre AA literature and uh, mind power disease, Tebow papers. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so it's been a really cool journey for me on here. Um and yeah, we, 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 should be, uh, we should be lucky to be alive. 
Whoa, that's fucking two and a half hours. I, we're going to have to just call it. Mm. Uh, thank you so much for listening, guys. I think this is a really, really good one. Um, I feel like, I mean, dude, it's so easy. We could just like read another paragraph and just go for another hour. Like easily. But what about like before we wrap up, I kind of want to feel like I, I, I kind of want to see if we can really tap into that like complete defeat, humility, powerlessness, that feeling, that surrender, mm-hmm. let go, give up. Because even just now thinking about that, you think I just thought of the shit you're going to try to do when you get home mm-hmm. and it made me get a little depressed. Really? Makes me anxious. I mean, it doesn't make me feel that feeling. It takes me out of that. Right. Right? It's like, and and anything, whatever. Either way, they're both negative things. They're both things that we shouldn't be. Those are feelings we don't have when we're in that. Like, dude. Like, it's just like, I just, I give up. That's that feeling. That's the feeling that I'm chasing. Yeah, like the weight of the world is off your shoulders. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything because the gift is already here. And you know what? And in fact, you spend all your time trying to achieve, but you're stepping on the gift, which is life. Which is just happening right now. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some stuff. I'm gonna do some jump rope, and then I'll push myself as much as I want to push myself and or or you know what maybe I should come up with a number what kind of exercise so, so you're just doing 30 minutes no 20 okay so I'll, I'm gonna do I'll, I'll do that too I'm gonna start with 20 and if I want to do more than 20 I'll do more than 20 but the hard thing for me is setting like a yeah I like the time better than like the number of push-ups you know right because I, I don't just Go, go, go. I, t- I do a set and rest, do a set yeah, and rest. Yeah, you, 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 you work out for 20 minutes yeah. however your body feels like you should be working out in that, walk in that day. Yeah. Yeah, and I already did my running, so I'm going to do the gallon of water. I'm going to do 30 minutes a day. And um, what was the other one? That- for me, I read three pages from a book, but it's not the spiritual stuff. Oh, I do oh every no, day. no, no, no. It, eating. That's the third thing. Well, the, you know what? That's oh, the first thing. I was going to put sugar on there, but I, I t- took it off because so, I can't do it. The, 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 the thing I want to be able to do with eating is I want to eat greens every day, which I have been doing. Okay, you got to be kind of specific, like once a day, twice a well, day, well, how much green, a little bit so you have some kind of parameters to follow. Well, so, so this is, well, why don't I just say this? I'm going to not eat bad. Right. Not specific enough. Uh huh. You don't have to come up with it right yeah, now. Th- yeah, I know. It's just, it's, but I think it's interesting because it's good for, cause if you're listening, you can do this too. And, 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 and this is like me doing it. And I think by people hearing me do it, it'll help them do it. So, you know, yeah. the, the eating thing I think is a good one, but yeah, like that's why Courtney and Veronica they would like weigh their food and like they had their shit like like so really so, yeah. dial in yeah so uh, but 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 I, I don't gotta tell you just the water alone yeah Angela's just doing the water yeah something about being hydrated yeah. and pissing a lot it really is oh, helps it dude, feels good you're yeah. right yeah I mean in the morning after I drink my smoothie and I'm like going for the tea I'm like wait a second I didn't drink enough water yet. You know, and I'll just like drink water. Like I have this thing. Yeah. Right. The only problem I have is out in the world, you can't go into a Starbucks and take a leak anymore. So it's like, you know, you know oh, yeah, everything's I, I, closed. So you, I'm, I'm shameless. I have no problem taking a leak. I'm afraid of the police up here because they've harassed me a few times. I'm actually going to, I got to kind of show this to the, to the rich guy hater. The rich guy hater? Mm-hmm. When you got it there. Sometimes you just gotta get it Oh, wait, are you pooping? Damn, you're pooping out there, son. No, watch. Well, whose house is that? I don't know. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. And that was recently because you got orange hair. Oh, you were on a walk. 
<laughs> Did you get to wipe? I look like everyone else, you know? Yeah. Because Oleg, o- o- Oleg, o- 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 Oleg said, what if they had a camera? He said, what if they had a camera? And I was like, oh, a lot of people do w- now. W- w- will you tell Billy about when I shit on the... You were there. I didn't see him on the No, thing. no, he, 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 he was the one who filmed me. Oh, okay. What were you thinking? Could, will you talk for a minute? W- will you sit down <laughs> for five minutes? Yeah, he, 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 he started filming. Uh, yeah, he's been so, so like that. Like, do you want to tr- like just trip on this? Like, so, so that has 22,000 views and, 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 and a thousand likes. And, and these are the comments. And did you hear the song I put to it? Uh, it's like, no. oh, oh my God. it's the Moonlit Sonata by Beethoven. Oh, so you really had to go. Like I it's, guess. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> like it was so, cause I've been eating a lot of greens, drinking a lot of greens. And that's another good thing. Yeah, about, uh, so when, you couldn't, you when, could when not do That's it. another thing about water and greens is when your bowels are moving, you feel better. Like there's nothing worse than like, you know, going all day and not like having a bowel movement, you mm, know, all stagnant. In but there. the point I'm making is that like, uh, you're not going to get any sympathy from me for not having Starbucks bathrooms because I'll just pull over on the side of the road and mm. do what needs to be done. I mean, not, that was a, uh, uh, that was a, um, you'll make a duty anywhere. Yeah. W- would you, you, you wouldn't do that. Oleg? No. Well, if you had I'm not to, stupid. if you absolutely <laughs> had to, you might, I will just poo in your pants and walk home. That's probably what I would have done. Oh, no way. I, we, I, and, and, and we were, you know, uh, you know, any normal person, I think, would have just held it. Yeah. Right. I would do that. Yeah. I would, I would run back home. Yeah. Or call Uber. Wherever. I wouldn't, like, shit in, like... <laughs> Uh, and front, like, front, what is that? Looks like a probably a five million dollar house or something. Yeah, I love that he like went and he showed the house. <laughs> he, that was actually perfect because it, it's it's a uh, it's like that's the you know you gotta wait for it and then when you get it, if it was there the whole time, it wouldn't be. It's like first mm-hmm. you first you soak that in and it's like almost like a short form of storytelling. Like okay, this dude's taking a shit. Cool, got that. And then now it's like oh shit, now he's in front of a big house. Crazy. Mm-hmm. And then I talk a little, so it's like it's kind of like a perfect. But I mean, there was a lot of shame. I I mean, if you were to have the balls to do that, would you, you post shame? Would you, you post have that? Feeling? Would you post it? The thing about that. No, I wouldn't. Cause I mean, but not, not only people like not, not only <laughs> not only did I post it, yeah. but I knew there there was it was going to get a lot of views because everything I've been posting. Uh, I had and a that, horrible doo doo experience once. Yeah, I mean, you really have shame. <laughs> um, you, you about that? I thought I thought you didn't. You look proud, like, but you look no, no, I, not about that. Uh, uh, about yeah, no, shame is a thing I talk about a lot with my therapist. Everybody's had a poop accident in public, though. Have you ever had a poop accident in public? In public? No, I always like r- running to. You've see. made it though. Yeah, and then you get there. Yeah. I did, never did you had it. Did you listen to the podcast with Oleg? No, I didn't know. I just we posted it like two weeks ago. It's pretty cool. I just talked with Oleg the whole time because we were in here, and, you know. And also, he's from the Ukraine, and he's a he was a big photographer out there, and. And then he, he's now a photographer out here. And really? Yeah, there's probably so much shit we didn't talk about. Like what, though? What, what, what kind of things? Well, like what would you be interested in? This guy lived in the Ukraine next to Kiev, which was right by... The thing that trips me out is it's Chernobyl. Or, no, he was right. Next How close were you to Chernobyl, though? Yeah, like 70 miles, probably. 70. Seven zero. There's a lot of old folks that stick around in the whatever zone. Because they don't want to leave their homes. Uh, I don't know what they call a zone. I was just listening to a podcast. Some stalkers. Guy... They name themselves stalkers. Stop. Stalkers. Oh, stalkers? wait. This is that thing that Yeah, then we... we were like with Steam and we were like talking about the stalkers. Yeah, wait. No, but okay. But that's the name of this guy's account. No, no, no. He's not talking. He's talking about like old people that don't want to leave their houses. They just stayed there. Oh, no, no, no. They, they already like left. Well, well, some, but on the outskirts, like it's still not really safe. 
but they choose to stay in their homes. Like, like, were, were, like, was Kiev a place where people were moving out of? Because no, 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 no. The, the wind, wind actually like uh, went to like Belarusia direction, which is like north, and Kiev, the capital, is like the south. Oh, so he basically. So what Billy's saying is that like there are people. No, no, no. Um, no, no the, the, people, people everywhere they left because there is like the the circle. The circle was really, really big. See, this is an example of this. It's getting lost in translation. No, he asking me like people. Like, no, I understand. Uh, I'm saying yeah. that they're there, and he's saying they're not. No, but 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 you're saying that they're there. Where did it blow? Where did the wind blow? To the north. north. Where? Like, what are those places? No, there's the Belarus. There's like border with Bel- like with Belarus. Like, so there's some people still like over there. Where the where it's kind of like so there was a circle there was a circle like the government told us there was right. a circle like let's say I don't know like exact numbers but let's say like hundred kilometers like fifty miles and then like on that fifty miles everybody's like gone because everybody knows like this like it's gonna affect your life because that's like, and, there and, is and, no but stupid are there people s- like right now in this situation with coronavirus because there's a stupid people and normal people. That's it. And over there, there's everybody was like. So who are the stupid people? Like who not like uh, wearing the mask when they going outside? Who not like sitting in quarantine? Who who was thinking like they're literally like strong? They have a strong immune system, and then they got like uh, virus. It's like uh, it's like Prime Minister of United Kingdom. Yeah, he got Corona, but so, before that, he's like, oh, well, like we're not gonna like shut down our country. So my dad's stupid. Yeah. And Billy. Yeah. Well, I have to keep working because my shit will die. So but I what? guess I could let it die, but... No, like, but you, 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 can, you can wear a mask. Well, no, I wear... Like oh, no, I usually mask, do. So. I, when I go into right. the homes, I wear a mask and a gloves and stuff. Yeah, he, he, he would I be... I wasn't at first, but then they got no, more I, serious. I opened the door and he was in a mask and he had his hood on. And he was yeah, like, I'm talking about the people like who actually like just like walking around without the mask and they like right. like screaming, I don't care because like I'm young and I have strong immune system. And but are you sure they're stupid? I still don't get it because look at the numbers. Yeah, that's too. Did There's you so many people? Yeah, and this little speck are actually getting it, but I could see how it could spread. I don't know. It's just I don't. I'm unclear. Uh, well, right now, it's like over the uh, half a million in in US. Half a million people have it confirmed. Yeah, confirmed and twenty more than twenty five thousand death already. Really? Is it? Yeah. Wow. So you're keeping up on all this? No, I'm, I'm watching. Like I'm watching news. Yeah, like all yeah. The, actually, all the, he knows a lot. He knows a lot about it. He's been been our information. He was the one who told us that the governor was like. Well, remember that day we were talking about that? The but, governor but of other, the LA said can... it's going to be at least another two weeks or something. And Veronica was like tripping out. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was like two, three weeks ago. He's just been up. No, but like what, what else you can, what else you can do? You at home, like what else you can do? Like Pornhub. Okay. That's like 30 <laughs> seconds, right? That's it. And then like news. I used to go like eight hours, but I'm over those days. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he had like a problem with that actually in sobriety. No, I'm like, I, 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 I told myself like, don't spend money, like even one cent. Yeah. Don't spend like, I never like, he like actually like we're playing, like we have a clan, there's a clash of clan game. And like, I don't know, or Chris, uh, Chris, like, um, he doesn't believe I didn't spend any cent to like, to play that game. Right. I didn't buy anything like in that game, but Pat, like he was buying, like when he was started, he was buying like crazy, like hundred bucks, hundred no, bucks. Like, no. like I need gold, I need gold, I, I, I need build like super fast. Come on. First of all, I've been playing that game for like 10 years. No, this game, like only like five or seven years. Seven years. Then. Okay. Yeah. So and, and, like so if you're I, trying to I, lie, I, just like, well, you well, are buying food. I no, mean, basically, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay. Oleg. Okay. Do you think I'm spoiled? At some point, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe like you, maybe ninety like percent. Do, <laughs> do you think that I buy things I don't need? Yes. <laughs> That's why I love Oleg. That's see, honestly, Billy. 
That's funny because he's not even afraid to say it. No, and that's why would I need to afraid? I can't. <laughs> he, he might hurt his feelings or something. I don't know. No, it's dude. his problem. Yeah, I mean, no. he asking me. Yeah, but I, I didn't go and say like ask me. No, he asked me because he wanna uh, know that. Yeah, like, but if he, he wouldn't know that, like he wouldn't ask me. Yeah, but we, we have a uh, me and all my friends have this like thing where it's like I I know that we like like love each other. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> like, we're good. You know what I'm saying? So we can be honest with each other, you know? No, but like, uh, and really, even, but you, when, you like when like somebody like lie in front of your face? <laughs> like, you like that feeling? Or like, I I care, I hate that. I would, I'd rather like just right. get that well, it's like everything. Just, it's comical. It's almost like dry comedy the yeah, way you do it. It's like deadpan. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, of course. Like, like you're joking yeah, in a very so, so dry way it, which to, is to, funny you know what's like actually it. and you know what's cool about like to bring it back to learning to lose is that style that something that is but it's not just funny it's like it's like serious it's like it's almost touching because it's true and it yeah so, there's a sincerity and, or and, sincerity and, and about it or something. roy you know roy the canadian director guy you, maybe you don't you've never met him either huh Oh, Roy, yeah, yeah, maybe, 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 whatever. I was talking to him about, you know, someone helping me make my movie and he was saying, he watched the whole, everything I shot with Mike. He watched the trailer. He watched all the scenes. I have a 50 minute cut, um, that I shot with Mike. That's just like us fucking around and like trying to like make a movie. Mm -hmm. And he said, there's something pathetic about a 30 year old, 37 year old man getting watched by a 50 year old man and they take it so serious and they're just so pathetic and it's clouded with this like money thing where like there's just so like there's just billions that have rich house. He was, he was commenting on like the pathetic humor, you know, in it and, mm. and that we should be focusing on that because there's a magic in that. Have you ever seen Fargo? Could be like a dark comedy. Yes, yes. Yeah, that would be a good thing. Yes. To... See, he really just gets what it can be. And, and it was pretty exciting to hear him talking about it because he's actually a really good director and he's actually finished movies and he's sober. He sent me a screen grab of uh, Yoda, of, of Craig, at one of his Trump rants. And he said, Craig's King Baby is showing. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't heard his rants, but I've heard he's other been people going comment so on hard on Trump. On, on Facebook, right? I, oh. think, I think Trump is good. Like he's giving money to people, mm. even if it's like uh, like kind of like before this like the the election. I, this like this election is going to be in like four months or six months. I I got a I got a oh, yeah. coming up. I, yeah, I, I got a Facebook message or a post from Sasha. It, it was about Trump. You know, he, the way he handled this in the beginning really fucked everyone, apparently. I don't know. Uh, really, yeah. and, 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 and he's having to look at that and he won't get honest about it. And he's, you know, cause they have videos of him literally saying, have you seen any of these memes about like how Trump was like, oh, it's a hoax. Yeah, but Trump is not honest. He's like hundred percent. He's like bullshitting. Right. He just, but well, he's he, doing something. I mean, no, uh, my dad loves him. I'm, I'm like, I'm not American citizen. I can't vote. And like, I don't, I don't give a fuck about like the, the Republicans or Democrats, but like, like you literally like <laughs> took like how many, like $2 trillion and gave the everybody, like, I mean, the businesses, like you, you, me, wow. even like, even, anything. even for it, me, it, I'm so, not the American so citizen. So the money's coming. Yeah. You're sure. You're, of you're it. getting some too? Yeah, I'm I'm a taxpayer, so like everybody who who pay tax. So that's actually kind of interesting because I don't know. Oh fuck! Record. I was gonna say I don't know if that would be happening under any other president. No, they're like every single president would do that. Exactly <sighs> okay, the so let me ask you: the non-American is Trump gonna win the election? I, I think yes, because of coronavirus. I think you're right, too. Yeah, I, I, because of I, I, coronavirus. I, oh, yeah. you think, And all the money he's given. And yeah. That's weird because the, the post Sasha sent was about him looking really bad because he thought it was a hoax and everyone's like, 
but I don't know if that's the reality. That might have just been some. I don't left know. The link. people who don't like Trump just hate him. I I don't even. I don't like. I don't know shit, but I don't get it. Why, I, they, why I, they hate I, him? So I, don't, much. I don't. I don't get it. But either. they hate him with a passion, like a burning pa- They can't sleep at night. They hate him so bad. I know it's so crazy. God, I wish I could find that that video. No, the Trump said. The Trump said, like at the beginning of that pandemic, he said, like this is regular flu. I don't give a fuck. I don't believe in this. This regular flu. Oh, yeah, but you just people. Watch, 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 watch. Or an epidemic of this proportion. This is this is this is what this is why people hate him. But he knew there'd be a pandemic or an epidemic. But he knew there'd be a pandemic or an epidemic of this proportion. Oh, he said nobody knew. There may and likely will come a time in which we have both an airborne disease. That is deadly. And in order for us to deal with that effectively, we have to put in place an infrastructure, not just here at home, but globally, that allows us... Nobody knew there'd be a pandemic or an epidemic of this proportion. Nobody knew there'd be a pandemic. And like literally... Obama is like calculated and like safe and he's not pissing. That's another thing that this post was saying was it it was saying that like he pissed a lot of people off and countries off by like just denying it. And then by saying it's China's virus, he's just a fucking dick, dude. He's but like pissing so, off China. It's so funny, though. No, it is. And, and everyone just needs to see that. You no, know he sounds like, I hope you don't take offense to these. He sounds like your dad. They talk the same way. Oh, it's because they're from New York, huh? Bro, can you just say that? Like, No, I'm not saying it again. No, my, that's a compliment. Oh, really? My dad <laughs> told me that someone was like, you sound like Trump. You remind me of Trump. And that's literally his hero. Oh really? Well, yeah, yeah, they do. They sound the same. <laughs> yeah, they, well, well, but the thing, the thing about Trump and my dad is like they're so business. You're not filming yourself. So. Oh shit! No, the, the, but the, the thing about Trump and my dad is they're so obsessed with business that nothing's personal, right? So don't take it personal. Don't take it. It's all. It's business. America is a business. So there might be some good to that. You know, that's why he's pissing people off. Because he doesn't think about how you're going to be affected personally or your feelings. Because businessmen, they just make decisions. No oh, feelings. Right, 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 That's what right, I'm saying. Right, They're right. businessmen. There's no feelings. So he's pissing people off. Can I go? Yeah. W- w- yeah. We're almost at three. You. Yeah, you're good. I just wanted to hear your well, voice. Wait, wait. I'm just curious because they say that you're paranoid about the virus. Like, I'm just wondering, like. Does it, par- piss, does it piss you off that I'm in here without a mask? Or I'm paranoid because I have really weak immune system. You know this for a fact. I know that for a fact because I was like, I'm actually like, like before I moved to U.S. Yeah. So I, I was sick like every month, something like nose or cough or throat, something. There was every single month there was something. Then I moved here because of like here is like a little bit warmer than uh-huh. in Ukraine. Um, I started like probably like six, seven times per per year, like coughing or uh-huh. like sore throat or like a resp- huh? Like all the respiratory like syndromes, which is like this virus effect right now. So you do really well in dry, hot climates. Is that what? Yeah, it's like it's actually helped me. Uh, but anyway, like um, I still like. Like, I see. For, see. Like yeah. last cup was like more than months. Like we were kind of like we were sick together. I remember like he was coughing, I was coughing, and really there was like more than one month. That might have been the coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it actually it, felt like I wasn't getting better, and something about it felt like long lasting. I don't. It felt a little different. I feel like it might. I don't know. And then she may have brought it from New York, right? Yeah, yeah. She but could. you guys didn't get sick, or you don't know yet. Bro, there's a whole conspiracy thing I got to show you about, like, this being a plan from the Illuminati's. It's a whole nother episode. We could talk about that. Well, Angela says it's a new world order. Yeah. I don't know if she's serious or not, but... No, it's... it's there's some... I, I wouldn't mind talking to her about All that. Right, I don't want to make you stay any longer. I was just curious about that. Yeah, you're good. No, like, I mean, that's that's the only thing. Like, why would, like, why would you need to reject... Right now, it's two million people got that corona, and more than like two million have got it worldwide. Yeah, 
confirmed confirmed yeah and like more than two 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 hundred thousand died so why that's you need where to i'm reject, a, like why you need to reject those numbers well i'm a little sketchy because a lot of people die every day so these people might right. have been dying anyway yeah that's that's dude that's actually what this whole video is about most of the people that are dying and even the way they word it on the media, they say this person died after being diagnosed with, they don't say he died from the disease. He said he died after being tested positive from it because most of them are dying from either heart failure, or old age or whatever. But Taylor was saying that COVID-19, you don't die from cancer. You die. Oh, you get complications. Yeah. yeah. So, so the COVID-19 is the complication, the complication that's causing their death. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's affecting their heart or their asthma. If you or have something heart. like, yeah. Right. So what he's saying is he doesn't think he's 100% anyway. So he mm-hmm. thinks COVID will be able to Fuck him up. A- exaggerate the things that are already happening, which could po- possibly. Because be. yeah, like, you're right. Like every single day, there's lots of people dying. Plus that 200,000. So. But this is an interesting video. This guy doesn't think it's real. He thinks it's Skull and Bones and the Illuminati and these really wealthy people trying to create a further distance between the classes. Well, it's definitely going to happen. Yeah. Also, mind. Also, control obedience. Like everyone, the, can the whole world be told what to do and and all do it? No. Well, no, but the, but like it's happening on a scale that we have never seen before in our lifetime or even our parents' lifetime. Right. The entire world is like. Quarantine. Oh, they are really behaving well, aren't they? I'm surprised. I, I, I'm actually surprised how but well behaved. That's not the point. The point is to put that fear and that control over fucking globally because yeah. this organization works on a global level. This isn't like, this is yeah. some elite, rich motherfuckers. Like, this is some Bohemian Grove, like, fucking Illuminati, skull and bones type shit. That's yeah. what this guy's saying. But he's not like just some fucking, he's like a real writer. Like this dude's OG and the way he explains it, it's a, it's, it's like a, it's an hour and a half video interview. You can go. Yeah. But like, I mean, like, it's just, no, I don't believe it. It's yeah, just well, interesting. When you, when you tell him this, uh, when you're saying that thing for like one and a half hour, just show me proof. I can talk shit. I can right. create stories. Well, well yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, I can be the Lord of the Rings. No, but, like, but, 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 like, but, but, but he's, he's explaining facts. He's saying like the way the tests were made, it, they, they, they test genetic material that exists in most people. That's the, that's the, um, the thing that it's testing for. That's weird. Well, here's he, my story that I made up is when, Populations right. or anything get too big. Yep. There's a natural select, the natural thing that happens, yeah, and, and rights balances things out. W- whether it's Mother Earth doing it, or the Illuminati, or whatever, it or, seems like it's something that needed to be done because it's cleaning the world and lowering our population. I, I, I Michaelis was saying, um, yeah, but it, sorry for interrupting you, but it didn't affect those countries with like overpopulated, like really. Like China, like Asia, and like yeah, like like it's like, just killing the idiots in America. That's even better. Yeah, <laughs> not even America, not only Amer- like Italians. Look. There's so many things that's scary too. Like if we go down, China could take over or something, yeah. and we'd no longer be the U.S. So we've only been the U.S. for how long, right? Well, I don't know. Like less than two hundred. It's nothing. Years. It's nothing. It, <laughs> and and throughout history, every. Every civilization has fallen. I mean, the Egyptians went 5,000 years. They went so long that their length of society is longer than they've not been. Wow. Like when we look back, um, they're, they're like the world record. But uh, what was that? It's just weird if you think about it, like what's going to happen and how things and yeah. Well, that's what I was saying to Oleg on the last podcast was I don't think anything is ever really going to be the same again concerning not only like how we interact with people but just how we think about what can happen to our society like you overnight could, you could think of it negative or positive i mean it could bring people together also i think it will do that too 
Like, when has the world ever been, the whole entire world is shut down? This is the one thing that I did want to talk. I thought we could talk a lot about this because it's, but not only that, but like people are just like recognizing all the things that they took for granted. J- J- Joe talked about this too. And so does Russell Brand. Oh, like family sticking together. Just and- everything. Just like, just everything. It's right. it's forcing everyone to just see Everything. All right, like, like toilet We're just slowing down. Food. You yeah, can't go to the market exactly. and get everything you want. And buying something but on in Amazon. Nine is going to be like another population. Yeah, see, uh, that's, that's what he kept saying was like, it, everything's going to go back to normal. China's factories are already starting up again. Well, yeah. He was saying, we're not going to learn anything from this as a society. Uh, yeah. No, we're going to learn. I'm not, I'm not telling. But, no, but what I was saying was that this could be the beginning of. Sort of like a new age. It's like different of, it's just, just like, I look at it differently. Like basically like humans are just constantly evolving and this is just like a big jump forcing us to use the devices that we have to like do incredible things like FaceTime people and create live streams and like not use our cars to generate money. Like we can do it. Our technology has afforded us certain opportunities and certain abilities to do things through like. But this fool's also talking about some 5G thing and stress and how 5G was is contributing to us in a negative way and radio waves. And so, I don't know, maybe this isn't better than a car. Maybe this is worse and it's just like... The 5G, uh, you hear Angela's way deep on that. But I don't uh, know. Do you know what? This guy, I'm going to send you this interview and this, this guy, I bet you she's fucking with this guy. Probably. What's his name? I don't know. I'll pull it up. Or actually, you know what? I'm going to tell everyone what it is so that they know. Um, Victoria sent it to me, of all people. Oh, I'm going over there tomorrow if I ever wake up. Yeah, you should ask her about it, bro. Okay. Yeah. Um, But I know so little about all that stuff, so I don't... Like, Angela would be able to actually speak on it. mm Mm-hmm. Oh, she texted it to me. Oh, but I think she texted it to like me and like Tim and like Veronica. And have you heard of any of this stuff that David Icke, the truth behind coronavirus? Sounds familiar, Iker. Yeah. So that's the thing that um. I mean, there's a lot of people posting a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah, your mind can really go. I mean. Yeah, but this guy, you know, he 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 he's talking about all that shit, you know. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Oh, if you made it this far, I'm I'm actually going to. Please text me. Okay, I'm, 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 my phone number is 818-968-4987. Hopefully, I regret that one day when this podcast blows up. I did the same thing with my first um, CD for Hypercrush. I put my phone number on the CD, the arcade. Mm-hmm. I have a plaque. That, that, CD, that thing sold more than... It went platinum. I mean, or whatever. We got a gold record, but like we printed thousands of these CDs that had my phone number on it. Like call like, cause this was like before this was like right when like email was like a thing. I mean, I mean it was a thing, but it wasn't like, like, you know, putting your phone, fo- your phone number was more important than like your email at the, at the time. And I was like young. And so like at the height of the hyper crush, when we were on in the van traveling across the country and then we were in a bus, um, people would just call me like all the time. Randoms, yeah, like fans. Yo, is this really Preston? <laughs> it happened like all the time, and it was fun. Yeah, you know, and like especially like with this kind of a podcast, like if someone does call me, or just shoot me a text, be like, "Yo, I made it this far," because this might be our longest podcast ever. It's over three hours. Well, you've tried to quit twice now, and it yeah. keeps going. <laughs> but like, so it's eight one eight nine six eight four nine eight seven. So text me, yo, I made it this far on the. I think we're gonna call it like. Uh, read like a tiny bit of chapter eight and just talk 
the rest of the time. But we actually got into the book a little bit and talked a little bit about step work and, and why that's beneficial. I think that's kind of like the theme of the podcast. But like that's what happens when you do step work. You just start talking about how it can benefit your life and what areas you need to change. And Yeah, except uh, when we're doing it not on a podcast, we'll go like repeat and read over and mm-hmm. go back and, mm-hmm. and yeah all right guys thank you so much <clears throat> good night oh and we got learning to lose shirts ridge production shirts all on the learning to lose website learning to lose.com do you have I, a hat a learning to lose hat oh yeah. did you get a learning to lose shirt no but i would like a hat oh you don't want a black or white shirt yeah i, I don't, don't wear black that. or white right fuck Okay, so yeah, learningtolose.com. You can get all kinds of cool shit. All right.